What's up, ladies and gentlemen? In this video, we are going to discuss special right triangles. Why? Because special right triangles is the foundation of the unit circle. The unit circle is created upon special right triangles. So to understand anything about the unit circle or where these values come from, when you start applying the unit circle, you need to know where they came from on the special right triangles. So let's go and go through an exercise of reviewing special right triangles as well as their special relationships. All right. So the way that I usually like to do this with my students is, you know, just let's just start with some relationships that um, I think we can all agree upon and we fully all understand. And the first one is going to be a right triangle. So we know it's going to have a 90 degree angle. And this is going to be what we call an isosceles right triangle. All right. So that means the two legs are going to be exactly the same. And then we're going to have the hypotenuse. And remember, the hypotenuse is always the largest side of your of your right triangle. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a relationship between all three of these sides. Now, I know if this is an isosceles right triangle, if these two legs are the same, then these two angles also have to be exactly the same. So if this is 90 degrees, that means these two add up to 90 degrees. That means these two angles are both going to be 45 degrees. So this is why it's dubbed the 45, 45, 90 triangle. All right. Um, so if we want to create a relationship, let's start using a variable. And in this case, I'm going to use the variable X. So I'll say that's going to be X. And since this is an isosceles, I know that's going to be equal to the other side. So that's going to be X. And now we need to figure out, well, what is going to be this hypotenuse? Now, remember Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Let's call this lay, let's call this hypotenuse C. So let's follow that relationship, right? We know for our legs, for any right triangle, any right triangle, we know A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A and B represents the legs and C represents the hypotenuse. Now, in this case, our A we could represent as X and our B we could represent as X. So we actually have a X squared plus a X squared equals a C squared. And again, let's go ahead and solve for C. So to solve for C, I recognize I can combine these. So a X squared plus X, or if you have a dollar plus another dollar, that's $2. If you have an X squared plus an X squared, that's a two X squared is equal to a C squared. Now to go ahead and solve for C, I'm going to take the <clears throat> square root of both sides. I can't take the square root of two, so I'm going to leave that where it's at. So I can say a C is going to equal to the square root of two and the square root of X squared is going to equal X. Now we do usually don't like to write this because sometimes this little radical goes all the way over and it gets confusing. We write it incorrectly. So I'm going to rewrite this as C equals a X square root of two. So if we are going to summarize here, the relationship of our special right triangle for our 45, 45, 90 triangle, what I can say here is if this is X, then that's X. And then our hypotenuse, which was C, is now in the relationship with X in terms of X as a X times the square root of two. All right. Now let's just do a quick little summary of the relationship between the sides of our right triangle. If we are going to go between these two, you can say that these are obviously going to be equal to each other, right? doesn't matter which direction we go. We know that those are always going to be equal to each other. If I'm going to go from a leg to a hypotenuse, Whatever my leg is, I'm simply just going to multiply by the square root of two, right? However, if I want to go from my hypotenuse to my leg, I'm not going to multiply by the square root of two. I need to go ahead and divide by a square root of two. Okay. So to go from leg to the hypotenuse, you multiply by the square root of two. And then to go from hypotenuse to leg, you're going to divide by a square root of two. So at the end of this video, I'll have a nice little worksheet where you can go ahead and practice some of these relationships to build them up because having that strong foundation of the relationships of your sides for 45, 45, as well as the next one is very, very important. So let's talk about this next one that we have. Now we have the isosceles right triangle. What is another special, what is another triangle that we have? We have the scaling isosceles and the equilateral. If you're saying it to yourself, then you're correct. If you're just listening to me, then I just might sound really, really weird. So remember an equilateral triangle is going to be a triangle that has three sides that are all equal lengths. So if they have all equal lengths, right, we could represent it like this and we could say, well, that's X, that's X, and then that's X. And we know that all the angles inside of a triangle add up to 360 degrees. And also since equilateral triangles are also what we call equilangular meaning all the angles are going to be equal as well. 
So this would be a 60 degrees. This is going to be a 60 degrees. And this is going to be a 60 degrees. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Well, one thing we can do with a equilateral triangle to create a right triangle, because you, as you recognize here, we don't have a right triangle, right? And I want to kind of create the same relationship that I did over here with the Pythagorean theorem, but I can only do that when I have a right triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a angle, a perpendicular angle bisector. So what that's going to do is that's going to cut this angle in half. So now this angle is going to be 30 degrees and that angle is going to be 30 degrees. And now I have created a 90 degree angle. All right. So I'm going to kind of like take this out here because that's going to want, that's what I'm going to want to focus on. So I have this triangle over here. We have this right angle and we know here that this is X. We don't know what the height is, right? So let's call that H because that's typically what we have for the height of a triangle. And then if the whole distance of here was X, but I have this angle bisector, well, that's going to cut the side in half as well. So therefore this relationship here is going to be a one half X. All right. But again, what's important here, this is a, remember this is 60 degrees and this is going to be 30 degrees. And we recognize that 60 plus 30 is 90, 90 plus 90 is 180. So we're good. But again, this is why we get this name, the 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? That's what we call the special right triangle. All right. Well, again, just like we did before, just like we did up here, we can go and create a Pythagorean relationship, right? Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. We know the hypotenuse is always directly across from our 90 degree angle. So let's go ahead and create that relationship. I have a one half X. We're going to quantity square that. Make sure you're squaring both of them. And then we're going to have plus H squared is going to equal to a X squared. All right. So one half X squared, that's going to be one half X times one half X. That's going to be a one fourth X squared plus an H squared is equal to an X squared. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to solve for H. Now, typically we want to get the X's to the same side. But before I even do that, I don't like having fractions. I think you can agree with me if fractions usually make things a little bit more difficult and, and also more opportunities to make mistakes. So before I get the X's to the same side, I am going to get rid of this fraction of one fourth. To do that, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to be a positive four over one. And what's important though, to keep this equation true, I need to make sure I multiply that four times each and every term, right? You just can't multiply by one term because then your equation would be off balance. So when I multiply the four times everything, I'm now going to get a new equation here. Four times one fourth, those are reciprocal. So that's going to equal the one. So I'll just be left with an X squared. This would be a four H squared, and this is going to equal to a four X squared. Let me move that over so I can see it. All right. Now I can go and simply subtract the X squared to both sides, and I'm going to be left with a 4h is equal to a 3x squared, th uh, sorry, 4h squared. And then let's go ahead and divide by 4, divide by 4, and I get an h squared is equal to a 3x squared divided by 4. Well, now just take the square root like we did uh, before to solve, to undo the squaring. So I take the square root of both sides, and then here's where kind of things get a little interesting. So I have h is equal to the square root of three X squared divided by four. Now I can break this up into the square roots of, you can always break up the square root of a rational of a fraction into the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. So this would be a three X squared divided by the square root of four. Now, again, I can't take the square root of three. So that's just going to be a three. I can take the square root of X squared. That's going to be X and I can take the square root of four. That's going to be two. So my final answer for my height is going to be a H is equal to a, uh, let's write the X in front. I'm just spend, spending time rewriting it. So the square root of X squared is X. And then we have the square root of three all over a two. And again, sometimes we'll write it like that, or you could have it there. So X equals the square root of three times two. So H, did I rewrite that over there? Yeah. So H in this case is going to equal to an X times the square root of three over two. All right, now, now let's go and summarize the relationships. But I think you'd probably agree, we have some fractions in here. And to remember these relationships with fractions, it's probably going to be a little bit more confusing, right? So 
the cool thing about special right triangles is as long as you multiply or divide by the same value, their relationship is going to be true. That's just creating a scalar, right? That's just, if you remember dilations from, uh, from your geometry graphs, you're just stretching or compressing, but the relationship between the sides is going to be, remain preserved. So what I recognize here is what about if we just multiplied everything by two? If I just multiply all these side lengths by two, then I'll have a relationship that, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to digest as well as remember. So these relationships for the 30, 60, 90 triangle is going to look like this. We know that this is going to be our 60 degree angle. This is going to be our 30 degree angle. And if we multiply by two, my hypotenuse is going to be a 2x. And since these are both legs, a lot of times we refer to them as the short leg. So this would just be an x, right? Two times one half is just one. So we have x. And then if I multiply by two over here, my denominator will, will um, remain out. And then I'm just going to have an x times the square root of three. So again, going back to those relationships here, if I want to go this way, I multiply by two, right? If I want to go from here to here, I multiply by the square root of three. Um, if I have the uh, x times the square root of three, then if I want to go over here, I'm going to multiply by two, but also divide by the square root of three. So whatever my x is, I need to make sure I'm multiplying by it by two. So if I had like a five, I'm going to multiply it by two, but also I need to divide by the square root of three. And over here, it's going to be the exact same, the exact opposite. So now let's go in reverse. If I was to go in the reverse direction to go from hypotenuse to short leg, I would divide by two. To go from the long leg to the short leg, I would divide by the square root of three. And then to go from the hypotenuse to the long leg, what I'm simply gonna do is divide by a two, but then multiply by the square root of three. So I probably should have written that blue one up in there like that. That'd probably make a little bit more sense because in that case you're going to, yeah. So what you're gonna do in this case is you're gonna multiply by two, but you're gonna divide by a square root of three. So what I have is I have designed a couple problems for you down below if you wanna go and practice it. And again, just giving you some good foundation relationships because what we're gonna do is we're gonna build these special right triangles into the unit circle. And the more familiar you are with those relationships, the easier the learning and understanding is gonna come. So if you wanna go and get some practice, go and check out the link down below or go and get started on the video on the next video I have for you here. Cheers.